Hey, next time you complain that you don't get enough sleep or sunshine, remember that nobody wants to hear you complain. Besides, there are places in the world where people see no sun for 90 days in a row and only get 6 hours of sleep in an 18-hour day. It's not some reality TV show, but a real job for a submarine officer. Let's find out more about how things really go underwater. Legend has it that the concept of a submarine was invented as early as 332 BCE. Alexander the Great supposedly submerged his soldiers into the sea in diving bells. Englishman William Bourne designed a more elaborate concept of a wooden boat completely enclosed in waterproof leather in 1578. The first working submarine for a crew of 12 oarsmen was built in 1620 by Dutchman Cornelius van Dribbel. That's where the phrase, uh-oh, it's dribbling up to my knees in here, came from. No, not really. I just made that up. Soon after, submarines were actively used for military purposes in the First Anglo-Dutch War and the American War for Independence. The Yankee sub in 1776 was named the Turtle, and it tried and failed to sink a British warship in New York Harbor. Well, a lot of water has flowed by since then, wink wink. And the submarine has, of course, seen a lot of advancements. There are currently ballistic and guided missile submarines, nuclear power attack submarines, diesel electric attack submarines, non nuclear submarines, midget submarines, and special mission submarines. Apparently, you don't want to mess with any of these. The three major submarine powers in the world are the United States, China, and Russia. And the US Navy boasts the largest underwater fleet over 70 submarines. Now, all submarines are different, of course, but they all have these key parts. There are two pressure hulls to protect it from the crazy pressure of water. It's 60 times stronger at a depth of 2,000 feet than at the surface, and you can't survive such pressure with just some scuba diving gear, you know? That's apparently how the diver nickname Crush came to be. Alright, so one hull is inside the other, made of metal, preferably steel or titanium for extra protection. Submarines also have fins, yeah, just like sharks, called diving planes or hydroplanes. They help the sub stay afloat under the water, and when it has to go up or down, they can be maneuvered. The next component is ballast tanks. When they're filled with air, the sub rises toward the surface and can do so pretty quickly in an emergency. But when they're filled with water, then it sinks down. Most submarines have diesel-electric engines, the energy from which powers up huge batteries that drive an electric motor to move the propellers. Military submarines normally have nuclear-powered engines with small nuclear reactors inside. There isn't exactly much light under the sea, so submarines mostly have to move through complete darkness and use a sophisticated navigation system. There's GPS satellite navigation that works on the surface and a system of motion and rotation sensors under the water. Submarines also use sonar, sound navigation ranging, to locate their targets. Sonar sends out sound waves to travel through the sea and come back as an echo, kind of like what whales use. This helps to determine the distances between a submarine and its target. And of course, there are life support systems for the crew to survive. Since a submarine is completely sealed, there's got to be a way for it to get the necessary oxygen, water, and warmth to last for months. The nuclear engine generates warmth and electricity, and that electricity is used to power the life support systems, producing oxygen, separating water molecules, and turning H2O into H2 and O2. Some subs can even remove the salt from seawater to make it drinkable. So now that you know what a submarine is made up of, let's focus on its heart and soul, the crew. It takes courage and skills to become a submariner, also pronounced submariner. It's a 100% volunteer military position, and those who decide to take it have to meet certain entry requirements and pass a series of tests. Obviously, a submariner has to be psychologically stable and academically qualified. No country will want someone who is unbalanced dealing with its most expensive weapons. Once they pass the initial selection, candidates start intensive academic, technical, and physical training. If you've ever been scuba diving, you know that water pressure is not so easy to withstand. Now imagine having to deal with it for months. Any prospective sub-officer takes part in pressure training and testing. 
This involves doctor-supervised submersion in a pressure chamber with a sealed tank. During the escape training, future officers are put in the water and must quickly ascend, letting the air out of their lungs by yelling as loudly as they can. Otherwise, the increasing air pressure in their lungs going up will kill them. Most of them yell, ho, 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 multiple times. Um, I don't know if Santa Claus himself ever did this drill, but I can check for you. Once the candidates pass the two pressure trials, the second of them twice as deep as the first, they are proudly called bubble heads. And then it's time to hit the waters. A normal submarine shift lasts 90 days, but it can become longer in an unstable geopolitical environment. A submarine officer confessed they once spent 328 days at sea, with stops only to get extra food supplies. As you already know, a regular sub has life support systems that generate air and even water, but not food. Speaking of food, the US Navy realizes the importance of it so much that the kitchen is the second largest space on their nuclear subs. Only the nuclear reactor itself has more space, occupying one-third of the total sub length, together with a propulsion system. The kitchen not only takes up plenty of space, but also offers a huge variety of meals, especially during the first weeks of deployment when the food is still fresh. Submarine chefs make the crew happy with dishes from lobster to lasagna to delicious desserts. Hey, I have a question here. Do they serve submarine sandwiches on submarines? And if the sandwiches are crappy, is it a substandard sub sandwich on a submarine? And if so, can you sub it with something else? Okay, okay, I'll stop now. Anyway, a submarine's food budget is higher than any other vessel. After the first couple of weeks, the crew has to eat canned, frozen, or dried food. As there's less and less food left, officers know it's time for a turnover. Ooh, maybe an apple turnover? No, not that kind. A submarine normally has two fully staffed crews, the blue crew and the gold crew. The blue crew gets on service first and stays on patrol for an average of 77 days. They then take the sub home or to an allied port overseas and do turnover, oh, that turnover, restocking and maintenance together with the gold crew for 25 days. While the blue crew is on vacation and training, the gold crew spends their 77 days under the sea. Then they switch again, and this cycle is pretty much the life of many officers. While a regular day above the water lasts 24 hours, things are different under the sea. For submariners, life is split into three shifts of six hours, making their day 18 hours long. They spend six hours on duty, six hours are given for studying and personal time when they can exercise, and the final six hours is sleeping time. Then they do it again. Since it's always dark outside their windows and really, really wet, the crew will be unlikely to tell you what time of day or even what day it is. If you appreciate personal space, becoming a submariner is definitely not for you. It's extremely limited to 15 square feet and a bunk called a coffin. In fact, you don't even get a bed completely to yourself since officers take shifts. Someone else might be sleeping in their bunk while they're on duty. And because there's always someone sleeping aboard, slamming doors or yelling is never okay. Normally, a submarine has two showers for 130 crew members. They are allowed to shower for no longer than 3 to 5 minutes, so everyone has a turn and to lessen the strain on the water filtration system. Cleaning laundry isn't easy either, since there's just one dryer and washer aboard. But the worst part is probably that there's just one bathroom per 40 crew members. And since the waste remains in a tank before its ejection, They've all got to be really careful about it to prevent its contents from going back out of the toilet. Waste not, want not goes without saying. Now, when it comes to entertainment, the choices are pretty limited, as you might guess. There is a tiny gym with one or two machines and weights available to the crew. The submarine has such limited space that most of its rooms serve more than one purpose. So a gym can also be a part-time torpedo room. Fresh ocean air is unavailable underwater, so there are no screen doors on a sub because that would let in all the water. And that's a joke. There is also a recreation room with a plasma TV that serves as a movie theater and video game room. 
There are cards and board games to help the crew bond and entertain themselves. As you might guess, submarines don't have Wi-Fi or any internet whatsoever. Because their work is top secret, any communication with the outside world is rare, if it happens at all. The last thing the commanding officers want is for someone to find out where the sub is located. That's why it's essential for the crew to be emotionally stable and be able to be without their loved ones. To avoid unnecessary fights, crew members never talk about politics, but discussing sports is okay. Life on a submarine isn't exactly easy, and only the toughest survive there. Maybe the average annual salary of $100,000 plus health benefits makes up for at least some of the stress and pressure the crew goes through. So, do you think you've got what it takes to be a submarine officer? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life.